Hey guys, Mike Noel, Blockchain Weekly, um, CEO for Blockchain Consultants and uh, facilitator for Blockchain Weekly. Uh, this is a weekly uh, a time when we get together and we discuss things that are blockchain. Um, we discuss uh, ICOs, but we like to discuss uh, a lot about uh, smart contracts, uh, about things that are happening in the world of smart contracts, things that are happening in the blockchain world. Uh, what's going on? Uh, we kind of do this on a weekly basis. Uh, last week we we uh, uh, we had some illness. A lot of the flu that's going around uh, kind of hit us a little bit, so uh, we ended up not having a uh, blockchain weekly last week. Looks like uh, our uh, attendance is suffering a little bit today. I do apologize, but uh, you guys are all going to get opportunities to ask questions. This is a great environment that that uh, Shindig provides. Uh, Mike had said that you can you can talk to one another, you can join in the groups, and you can raise your hands, you can ask questions any time during the segment, um, and we'll get to your questions. And uh, well, you know, if you have something to say, please let us know. Uh, we we would certainly appreciate it. This is a live event. It happens every single Wednesday at two o'clock Eastern time, uh, one o'clock at noon. Um, Mountain Standard Arizona time. That happens to be where I'm at. I'm in beautiful downtown Phoenix, Arizona. So every week at this time, uh, feel free to come on in and see what's going on with our shindig and what's going on in blockchain this week. And you know, you you it's almost to the point that we have to start looking at blockchain daily. Things are changing so quickly and so rapidly. Um, We've got a lot of things. I was uh, at an event yesterday with the Lightning Net Network doing stuff on Bitcoin. It was kind of interesting. Um, there's a lot of talk right now about the ICOs and about uh, really what we're doing and, and how we're doing it and uh, how to make it happen a, a little better and a little quicker. Um, that's kind of the, the focus that, se that people seem to have. Is, is how do we actually take these smart contracts and start implementing them? Seems like there's a lot of ICOs out there um, that are uh, talking a big game. There's a lot of you know forward thinking, but not a lot of people doing uh, base hits. Uh, not a lot of people really doing the uh, actual stuff about smart contracts and, and working with blockchain and implementing blockchain in, in interesting ways that people can actually use. We do have a guest this week that uh, has got some of that stuff, and, and uh, I can't wait to have him on. Uh, Charter Coin is a, an interesting animal and provides a scalability and a lot of the security uh, that's important to implementations as far as blockchain is concerned. Um, an interesting consensus model, a couple of other things. Uh, backing up a little bit into what's happened this week, uh, we've got uh, some interesting things that have come in from the SEC as far as tokenization um, and what uh, what it needs to be as far as a token that is not a security. That's becoming more and more important as time goes by. A lot of people are getting into some trouble with securities and licensing. So you, those of you that are... Uh, in this process now of implementing blockchain, looking at, at how we're going to uh, to use blockchain, how we're going to implement it in, inside of our enterprise. Um, if you're using it to raise funds, just be careful the way you word it, the way you're doing things. If you're if you're not on board with a an attorney and and have a, a reg A, reg A plus, reg C, or reg D, um, and those of you that are doing strictly uh, tokenization. Uh, and utility tokens, it seems to be that that's going to be the way that that's going to be clear. We've got some indications from the SEC. I'm moving forward on two projects uh, uh, based on that information. So um, I'm feeling pretty secure about that. Um, what else is going on? It, it's just, it, it's, it, it seems like uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in real estate and there's a lot of cavitation in real estate. And a lot of people doing things with blockchain. I don't know how to put this other than Noel's Law, right? Noel's Law, uh, those of you who have been on Blockchain Weekly understand Noel's Law. Noel's Law is uh, the first thing that a decentralized or a centralized organi organization will do when confronted with a decentralized mechanism is try and centralize it. And that's what a lot of things are going on right now in real estate. We've got a lot of large companies that are trying to centralize the distributed ledger uh, and they seem to be failing pretty pretty regularly. So something to keep in mind. 
uh, when you are looking at distributed ledger, you're looking at uh, implementing these types of things for your enterprise, make sure your mindset is, okay, this is a decentralized mechanism and um, we need to kind of open up our environment, start talking to people about it, bring people into it to consult uh, because they're all out there and all willing to do it. And we also need to make sure that we're not trying to uh, take our old ways and move them into something new because that's really where it's, it's having issues. Um, Phoenix, Arizona, if you're in Phoenix, Arizona, next week is Startup Week. Um, interesting from the standpoint of Startup Week happens every year in Phoenix. It's kind of a big deal in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, this week, it's kind of different. Yeah, they have a, an entire day, Thursday, that's dedicated to blockchain. So uh, Startup Week this week, uh, this coming week, Thursday, if you're in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, will be dedicated to blockchain. I'm, I'm on a panel, I believe, at three o'clock. There's some interesting guys that are are, are out there. So please feel free to uh, uh, get on board with uh, Startup Week and, and come on out and visit us. What else is going on? Um, you know, blockchain is interesting. That's all I have to say. We, we've got a guest today. He, um, he is with a, a company called Chartercoin. Chartercoin brings some interesting things as far as scalability and security. And uh, Chris, are you on? Can we get you going? On? Mike, can we get Chris on the line here? Hey, Chris. Hey, Mike. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Hey, I just want to you know take a quick segment here and remind everyone about uh shindig and about the environment and uh if anyone's interested in this type of environment and this type of of thing uh, that's kind of different but kind of interesting uh please reach out to mike michaelakis and uh, uh have a chit chat with him about how he can bring a shindig to a venue near you real soon um i want to talk a little bit about you chris and and what you're doing and, and with charter coin and I'd like you to kind of spend some time, if you would, uh, uh, Chris, talking about, you know, your past and where you've been and, and what you've done. Does that make sense? Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, no problem at all. Go ahead. Wonderful. So, Wonderful. so my background, my background, 20 plus years in marketing and strategy primarily. Uh, went to Georgetown for undergrad. Uh, Northwestern for Business School, did the big corporate Fortune 500 gigs, uh, Adidas, Mattel, uh, Boost Mobile, moved over to Australia, worked with Virgin Mobile uh, there, and then a little less than 10 years ago, uh, started my entrepreneurial journey. I've started several companies uh, in the mobile and ad tech space, and recently, a couple of years ago, moved here to Seattle and uh, a little less than a year ago, like a lot of people in this space, I went down this blockchain rabbit hole. Uh, I got yeah. hooked, line and sinkered. As soon as I came across it, uh, fell in love with it. And I spent literally months, day after day, just researching and trying to study and understand this, this platform because I felt like its potential to change the world and change how we do things in the world is just, you know, obviously many people talk about it being on par with the internet. I definitely saw that from day one. So I started researching, uh, studying the basic dynamics of it, the basic benefits of it. Then I started looking at the platforms and different technologies, different consensus protocols, uh, trying to understand the differences we, we, between. We, we call that being infected by the blockchain virus. Yes, yes, yes. I, absolutely. I often tell the story of sitting out on my porch over the summer, my back patio, my daughter looking at me saying, what's wrong with you, dad? My eyes are red. I got the <laughs> computer sitting on the table next to me. And I'm just like, one more blockchain article. And she's like, dad, you need to stop. So so I went hook, line and sinker. And then I. Uh, you know, you're not the yeah. only one. A lot of us, a lot of us have gone through that process, you know. Um, we call it the blockchain virus, and and you know, you you talk to someone, and it's you know this kind of stuff. And he says, "Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go home and take a look at that." Next time you see him, it's a week later, and you know he hasn't gotten any sleep, and um, you know he's foaming at the mouth, and you know he's talking like, blah, blah, blah. so uh, it's, was... it's a common 
important thing that it's, that's happened to us all. And, and welcome to the club, Chris. So go ahead. Thank I'm you. sorry. That, Thank you. No up. problem. It's a thousand percent my experience. And then uh, and then along the way, I met my co-founder uh, for Chartercoin, Tim. And uh, Tim, I, I've written a few articles uh, uh, talking about Tim and, and Chartercoin. And when I met him, it was just really kind of randomly at a meetup. Uh, and I saw something that I'll show you in this brief presentation that just caught my mind at the time because I had been at that time studying quantum computers and the threat of quantum computers to blockchain and, and, and uh, protocols down the line. You know, so uh, I, I know a little bit about Tim. I mean, can we talk about Tim? Can we talk about yeah. who he is? Yeah. Can we? Yeah. So can I'm, we? I'm happy to. I'm happy to. Oh, really? You're he happy is, to, huh? You know. He's a fascinating um, let me individual. Lock the door and make sure that uh, you know I'm in a secure <laughs> environment. Go ahead. <laughs> so Tim is a fascinating individual because he is a true polymath. He understands uh, a range of highly complex subjects from uh, consensus protocols to artificial intelligence, anti-artificial intelligence, uh, cryptography. He's got an IQ of 172. He, he's eternally curious. When I met him, uh, Chartercoin was one of over 100 different inventions that he's been working on over the past 20 plus years. Uh, he's an expert in obfuscation and compression technologies, which is where he started in the late 80s. Uh, and so he, he, he had this beautiful thing that he created, um, yet like a lot of developers, he communicating the beauty of this thing isn't exactly his forte. So uh, when we met, we used to sit down literally every day in the evening. He would get off work. Uh, he works for a company that does consulting to military and, uh, and government and works on. He's got security clearance and basically they reverse engineer and upgrade systems, systems like NORAD or intercontinental ballistic systems or a lot of the mission critical stuff. That's he's the guy in there doing it. And uh, and so for him, when he came across Bitcoin back in 2009, uh, he did what he did for his job. He said, well, how would I, you know, pull this apart and put it back together? Um, what would that look like? And then in uh, 2015, he started actively working on that and building charter coin. So he's been a huge part of my education because personally, like. Uh, I'm a I'm a skeptic in in some ways, you know. I, I was I was enamored by the technology, but um, I jokingly say in one of my uh, uh, articles that like any good MBA, you might not be able to come up with a good idea, but you can break apart other people's ideas. Uh, <laughs> if you if you get an MBA, that's what they teach you. How do you break apart other people's arguments? So I would spend each evening sitting with him and having him teach me all about charter coin, and then each day going and researching and trying to find out why everything he was telling me was wrong and it couldn't work and that it and that it had no future. And after several months of doing that, I eventually went, I actually can't find a better public protocol than what he's developed. And so we got together and said, well let's let's bring charter coin to life. And so that's kind of the uh, the background on it. I got this brief presentation. It's only about four or five slides long, um, which will provide a little bit of context in exactly what we're doing. And, uh, you know, I can walk people through that if you like. Sure. Wonderful. Um, Mike, if you can just flip to the next slide. Great. So charter coin, what we're doing is we're literally creating peer to peer electronic cash. Uh, Satoshi's original vision for uh, that was that he talked about in his white paper. And so what we're doing and what makes it different is that it's highly scalable. Uh, there's this inherent tension between scalability and decentralization that results in low throughput and slow transaction speeds for most public blockchains or virtually all public blockchains. Uh, but big, uh, but Chartercoin is highly scalable. We start off at over 300,000 uh, transactions per second, and yet we maintain security and censorship resistance uh, uh, and the, the benefits that come from that, uh, from decentralization. And while other blockchains tend to get slower, the more decentralized they become, Chartercoin actually gets faster. Uh, we've got 
plans or, or, or long-term security in mind as well. So uh, we talked about quantum computers and the threat of quantum computers. Essentially, quantum computers, they're 100 million times as powerful as your typical laptop. And what they uh, will be able to do is break the encryption, SHA-256, used by all the blockchains out there today, and they can do it really quickly. Uh, what we've developed is a digital signature technology that's already patent pending uh, that protects and guards against quantum, uh, quantum attacks. It's also uh, our protocol is Byzantine fault tolerant and asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerant uh, and resists 51 percent attacks and, and civil attacks. So it's, it's very secure. And then we have thought about, you know, user friendliness. You know, one of the things, for example, that we know in order to encourage the adoption of cryptocurrencies is, is that the average person is not going to use cryptocurrencies if they feel like if I lose my computer, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose all my money. So we've developed things like a three-factor authentication wallet recovery um, so people don't ever have to worry about, oh, my gosh, you know, I've, I've lost my, my stuff for good. Uh, we've, we've developed in systems uh, that enable people to ensure that they're sending and receiving good charter coins so that uh, you never send your stuff to what might be a valid address and have it go off into the ether. You know, we've seen just Coinbase just announced yesterday, you know, hey, if you send, you know, Bitcoin cash to a BTC address and Coinbase is lost forever. Uh, and so things like that that are that are make charter coin more user friendly and will drive adoption. We'll develop yeah. SDKs. Mm -hmm. Can we talk, can we talk about this for just a little bit? Because uh, I mean, you know, scalability issues, um, you know, Ether, uh, Ethereum is at what? seven transactions a second and bitcoin is bitcoin four transactions. Around seven ethereum's like you know 11 not much not much better right and um you know every time you see someone talking about uh, ethereum they're talking about scalability and they're talking about transactions per second and they're talking about how that's going to do i mean i think mist is coming up mist uh has you know the promise of of doing some of that for for ethereum so this is a big, big, big issue that a lot of people yes. are working on. Can you give us some insight of, uh, on how maybe, I mean, is it, what, what is the secret sauce? Can you give us some insight into that? Yeah, sure. So uh, Tim is, as I mentioned earlier, he's an he's a expert in uh, compression technologies. So one of the things that we are able to do is compress our chain to make it small. And making it small helps to make it fast. There's actually several pieces. Actually, you know what, I, what I'll do is I'll walk you through because the presentation, a couple of slides will begin to okay. put together the pieces of what okay. allows for the scalability. So that, that's probably the easiest thing. So, Mike, if you can flip to the next slide. So, this is what we were talking about highly scalable, maintaining decentralization, quantum safe digital signature. We've got a stable mining process which combines both proof of work and proof of stake that's unforkable. Uh, talked about the wallet, simple and easy to use. I want to use. talk about that. I want to talk about that. I mean, yes. So I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm going to cover those off in the next couple okay, of slides. Next right. slide, please, Mike. So there was a version of this slide that my co-founder Tim had on the day that I first met him. This is what piqued my uh, interest, and I said, "Oh, we should we should connect. We should talk." Um, this is uh, an example of what we call a reversible atomic and digital signature. This is a patent pending technology that Tim developed. And what you have at the top is you have Bitcoin's standard hash, 64 characters. Um, uh, and in terms of stored transaction space is also 64 characters. Charter coin standard hash is 32 times bigger. Um, that's uh, 6, 65,596 uh, bits. Uh, and thus, from a quantum computer, a quantum computer cannot hack into that, cannot decode that uh, as quickly or, or can't do it like it can the standard hash. And that's a, a function of uh, this is just a brute force attack where uh, quantum computers trying millions and millions and millions of, of permutations in order to decode the, uh, the public private key uh, pair. It's, it it's not unhackable, but it takes 32 times, uh, 32 times more longer to, to hack it. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's not just not, that it's not unhackable. Um, it's extendable uh, up to, any, uh, actually, uh, 
excuse me, I said this was 65,596. It starts at 8,196 and goes up to 65,596 bits. So we actually can make it bigger, thus making it impossible for a quantum computer to be able to uh, break it. But That's he also has developed a uh, obfuscation and compression technology that allows that to be stored in just essentially 11 characters. So the, the, the size of the digital encryption uh, piece enables the speed of the blockchain to actually be much faster because essentially that's less than 16 bits, which is a packet of data, uh, 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 16 bits, which is just a packet of data uh, on the internet. So that's one piece of it. The other piece of it is that uh, we have built an interdependency between links in the chain. And so in order to create the next link in a chain, you need a bit of the developer key from the previous link, bit of developer key from the current link in order to create the new link in the chain. That means that you can't have miners uh, pre-mine. We don't end up with things like orphan links and I use the term links and blocks interchangeably here simply because we're actually an atomic chain. We don't actually have blocks. We're time, time work segments, so the, uh, but they function very much like blocks. But because of that, you don't have there's, – there's no way to pre-mine. There's no way to get ahead. There's no way to fork the currency because unless you have the previous information from the previous two blocks, you can't create the third block. So you can't have your 51% attacks. Is that, is that your proof of stake algorithm is you must have the last two in order to create the third? That is, is that part of your proof of stake. And, 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 and yes, correct. And so okay. uh, that along with the way that we have a uh, node aging system. So we have uh, super nodes and there's in order to ensure the public trust, we use an aging system. And so that aging system ensure, along with this interdependency between the three nodes, ensures that people cannot pre-mine and it allows us to be really fast. And it allows you to be really fast because within those three links, uh, whenever a transaction ha happens, we have what we call round trip verification, meaning we can cryptographically verify the authenticity of that transaction right at the time when it's being, when the transaction happens. And then we verify, we have additional verifications from the wallets and the super nodes, um, ensuring finality after 106 wallet transactions and 14 super node transactions. So this enables con transactions to happen concurrently all over the, you know, through at any time and thus allows us to trans uh, have very high throughput of transactions. A lot of moving parts, though. Uh, it's actually relatively simple, and I'll sp explain why. Flip to the next next slide. So our mining system, um, there, there's two pieces to why it's, it's really simple. So one, we just have uh, our atomic chain is simply made up of a time work segment. That's literally it. It's, it's that simple. There's no, um, for example, like with uh, IOTA or other uh, uh, DAG protocols, you got things like the tangle where you got lots of different moving parts. We simply have a time work segment. And our, uh, when we combine proof of stake and proof of work, what we've done is we've said anywhere there's a wallet, you can lend computational power to verify transactions. And because of this interdependency that exists in the chain, a wallet only needs the previous three links in order to begin verifying transactions. That's the key. And because a so wallet only needs that. You have to have a wallet in order to mine, right? Yes, correct. Okay, all right. But because yeah. of you only need those three links, and the, and the the mining, your, mining pro, your mining protocol is interlinked with your wallet. Now, is, uh, do you have a mining pool that's built in or are you looking for people to develop mining pools or how are you going to be doing that? Great. I'm sorry, so, I asked uh, difficult questions. I no, apologize. No, great questions. So we have, we have uh, super nodes and we have wallets that can mine. So super nodes, think of them like any other nodes. 
okay. and they have wallets that can mine. The wallets are able to mine because, and they can fit on any device, a, a mobile phone, tablet, television, and because it's so small. You only need those three links in the chain in order to be able to start lending computational power as a wallet. Is it CPU Super resistant nice. or the algorithm? Is it CPU resistant? Yes. I mean, yes. Okay. Okay. So, so computational power, anyone who wants to lend computational power right off your phone, okay. you can be rewarded, uh, earn, earn incentive. And then secondly, the super nodes, super nodes, uh, they are doling out the work that is done for the proof of work portion uh, of the mining. And so uh, I recently wrote an article called Ditching the Difficulty Algorithm. What we actually use is the 8192-bit digital signature, which is a mathematical model. That's what the miners mine against. And what they're looking for is they're trying to create the most unique digital signature technology, which can only be done by doing computations. Okay. And what we, what we have is the miners race to find the most unique digital signature that they can find and submit that to the super nodes. And they do that every minute in a winner take all race. So every for minute, that. Mm -hmm. for ev okay. every minute, that's how, that, that's how the, 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 the mining works, the proof of work mining works. Is there, and so, is there a difference? algorithm i mean when more people become uh, when more people start mining i mean you you obviously so this is, this is good, great, great question so because this is a mathematical model the way that tim has built this has designed this is for equitable distribution so instead of everyone working on the exact same problem we actually dole out work to each and every miner they're working on their own version of finding the what we call proof of complexity of this digital signature. And so that way, miners, no miners can artificially increase or decrease the complexity of the of the system. So you can't have this eliminates the ability for miners to essentially take over or take control of, okay. of, of the currency. And that's and so, the way that or you're dealing with the 51% hack and because you're, you've got diversity as far as the mining is concerned and coin creation. Right. Interesting. And the race starts over. Race starts okay. over every minute. So yeah. it's not as if you're carrying on from the previous minute. So, okay, minute ends, boom, new race starts. Difficulty, uh, 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 digital signatures are doled out. Work segments are doled out to every single miner and or mining pools. And they race again. For that minute to find the most complex digital signature interesting but uh, i didn't mean to interrupt i apologize go on to the next slide no not not, not at all not at all so th this you know allows us to be highly secure it prevents us from being able to be forked it allows us more importantly from a scalability perspective to actually get faster as the network grows so we don't have capacity constraints uh, or get slower as the network grows because the more wallets, the more verifications that can be done. So we, we've essentially taken the roof off of the scalability throughput issue and we've done it in an, in an on-chain way. And what is the consensus algorithm that you're using? I mean, how do we do consensus in this? So, so consensus, once, once a transaction happens, uh, the wallets begin the verification process and and they and they submit information uh, to the super nodes, of which the super nodes do additional verifications, and we have finality at 106 wallet verifications and 14 uh, uh, super node verifications, and one from the oldest set of super nodes. So let me ask you a question. I mean, let's talk about lensing, uh, you know, ether scan, that kind of stuff. I mean, that's uh, we we have uh, in this thing where we're rationalizing workflows, right, in, in enterprises, right? Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that we find is that we have data points and uh, they're not allegorical. I mean, they're, they're actual data points. They're not self-reporting uh, data points and they're not self-collecting data points. They're actually data points that we, can, that we can pin our hat on. 
uh, and begin to collect this data. And it gives us an interesting tool to, uh, to, to look at historical data and then start making some changes and start making things more effective and more efficient. Does that make sense? You know, you, you follow me on that? So um, if, and, and one of the things about uh, the current consensus model is that um, we know that, uh, you know, there's a, there's a consensus out there, it's 100 million or 1,000 or whatever it is, and we know that historically everything down to the Genesis block um, is going to be right. It's going to be right every time you look at it, and it's not going to change. So in your model, we have uh, every 1,060 or whatever it is, whatever that model is. So there's there's a, a bit that it says, okay, this is finalized. We've, we've, we've looked at it. We've done our consensus. This is it. It's added. And then that never changes. But how is that stored? And how do we make sure that that doesn't change over time? Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, like any other protocol, once something is added to the chain, it's immutable and um, I mentioned round so the verification where we where we cryptographically so verify. Yes, okay. it's added all to right. the ledger. Okay. And it's cryptographically okay. verifiable um, uh, all the way back to the Genesis block. Okay, good, good, interesting, interesting, interesting. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, uh, so what Tim is, has created there, you know, and I've been writing articles about this because I've been breaking down the different innovations within this overall protocol, uh, such that it's a bit more bite-sized. It's a little bit difficult to, to explain them all in a, in a single setting. It took me, frankly, it took me three months before I felt like I even had my head around it. But uh, the, the short version is highly secure, highly scalable, user-friendly, and, uh, uh, and designed, we are specifically designing this for value transfer. There are other uses that, that can that can be done with it for sure, but at this point, we're specifically designing this to be electronic cash. Okay, so uh, smart contracts don't fit into this. It's electronic cash with velocity, basically. It's electronic cash with velocity. People can build uh, products and services uh, around the protocol. They'll be able to do that through, through APIs and SDKs. So uh, people can write and use languages that they're comfortable with in order to interact uh, with the protocol. But uh, uh, but, there, but we won't be building uh, smart contracts and the like on the protocol. Are we? Are, is the development on this is it private or is it um, public? I mean, can we can we see this on GitHub? So this, 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 this will all be on GitHub. It will all be a, a public blockchain. Yes, nice. we are I like that. making this permission. You know, this is that this was you know, Tim's original vision was literally around uh, building electronic cash that can be used all over the world, uh, uh, secure through the year 9,999. Uh, we will be releasing, you know, we will eventually get to a place where you're releasing one charter coin every minute uh, of every day uh, of every year. How many charter coins have you released? Uh, so we haven't. We, we we will actually be having our test net. We're setting up our test net now. Um, we're raising capital, but we're raising capital privately, so we're not doing an ICO at this time, uh, uh, and don't have any intention to do an ICO. We uh, we will not be pre mining uh, the coins, uh, so it, it will be they will be derived the old fashioned way through through mining. <laughs> um, what, and we also what, have what? some. Uh, we will, I expect that we will be live within six months of funding. Um, we will actually have our test net, uh, live in the next 30 to 60 days. We haven't said, he hasn't given me an exact date yet. Uh, and you know, alpha within a couple of, couple of months after that. Okay. So let's move on to the next slide. Interesting. Yeah. So kept okay. it, uh, uh, that's the basics of it. I try to keep it short just because um, one of the things when I've attended these uh, blockchain weeklies, Mike, is I love the interaction part of this. So I didn't want to take up the whole time doing a presentation. I wanted to give people a chance to you know, ask any questions and stuff. Because as you know me, I'm the one who's you know, back there, you know, putting either sticking my hand up or dropping questions into the, uh, <laughs> into the chat boxes. Yeah, you know, it's kind of, you know, like I say, um,
you know, we didn't have one last week, so we kind of dropped momentum a little bit. Um, and I'm not sure that we have any questions, but please, anyone that's out in the audience, if you have any questions whatsoever, please raise your hand and uh, let's ask some questions. Let's get some people engaged in, in uh, on the screen here. Um, you know, we do have this on YouTube and we get a lot, we get a ton of views. We get, you know, over a thousand views on, on most of the videos that we, we publish on our uh, YouTube channel. And that's uh, youtube.com uh, forward slash C's forward slash blockchain weekly. Or you can just go to YouTube, search for blockchain weekly, and you can see the, uh, the, the replays of the videos. So that's something interesting. Does anyone have any questions of, of Chris or of Chartercoin or of anyone else? All right, then we're, we're, we're going to go into a, a conversation about my grandmother's chocolate chip cookie recipe. <laughs> I'm threatening you. Uh, You're being threatened. Uh, I, I, I recommend for folks who are interested in learning more, um, you can follow me on, on Medium. Uh, uh, I'll send you, send you the link to include in, in, in the show notes. And in that, I break down a number of these areas uh, uh, bit more distinctly so it's a little bit easier to take in some of the information so I'll discuss the scalability I discuss our uh, our racetrack protocol I discuss how we've changed the difficulty algorithm uh, I discuss our quantum digital signature uh, our white paper is also available we've actually done two white papers one for uh, charter coin and one specifically just on the digital signature technology because we because uh, uh, that is is there are still there are still no great solutions uh, beyond this for quantum security of uh, of the blockchain. There are folks like uh, Quantum Resistant Ledger uh, uh, and others who are experimenting with quantum resistant uh, uh, blockchains, but very few uh, actual solutions. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's kind of the brave new frontier of the brave new frontier that comes in front of the brave new frontier um, is this this whole idea of of quantum and how do we deal with computers that are just that quick, um, you know? And there's a lot to be said for what we're doing as far as rigs is concerned, building rigs and and mining rigs. Those are quantum computers in and of themselves, you know. Yes. Uh, we, yes. And we, yes. We, we, you know. we have a question. This is awesome. Um, so DMC Donald uh, has asked uh, what patents are pending in the possession of charter coins. So what patents do you have? What patents are you working on? Tell us all about the patents. Yeah, the, the reversible atomic digital signature uh, is in patent pending right now. Uh, it's been in there for a little while. We're working on the lawyer to have it move along. But uh, that was an original uh, invention of Tim's uh, several years ago. He started he started work on compression back when we were doing uh, uh, the the uh, zip drives back in the late 80s. Remember those, you know, big, big, big drives. We were trying to put everything on. With, <laughs> That's far from me, man. I don't remember the 80s. <laughs> really? Yes, I do. Yes, I had those zip, zip drives. Yes. And, um, so, you know, I, I can remember just thinking, wow, this is just so much. I can I can almost put a phone book on this. This is why would I ever want any more data than this? I can, I can remember having that, that that conversation in my mind. Wow, this is a phone book. It's got a lot of stuff in it. How? I mean, gee, wow! Why would you ever need more than this? You know? Yeah, yeah. So he started. Yeah. He started working in that space uh, that that far back, and uh, and got the patent pending actually on the digital signature technology. Um, I believe in 2012 it was. So uh, so he was thinking of you know about this stuff uh, in depth for a long time early on. He was with. He was originally with Aviato, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a a very jaded um innuendo to silicon valley one of silicon my, valley uh, exactly one of my favorite sitcoms right and uh pied piper and the compression algorithm it, it's it, it, i just i mean anytime anyone says a, a compression algorithm anytime those words come out of someone's mouth i think oh i remember when i sold aviato yeah. 
Um, but yeah, compression is interesting. It, 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 it's where it's at. And um, I, I'm, I'm interested to learn more about um, you're taking a hash that is over a thousand characters and reducing it down to 11 characters. I, I'm interested in learning how you're doing that. Is there a patent pending on that? Yeah, so that that's exactly the, the the piece that is the patent pending, and it's it's all done via via um, computational uh, CPU compression. So uh, we actually leverage both CPU compression and storage compression in Chartercoin. So Chartercoin is really small; like it'll even a hundred years from now, it'll still fit on a on a terabyte drive that you buy from Best Buy, you know, tomorrow. So um, uh, it, it's much smaller. In fact, from a storage compression perspective, it's 90 times more compressible than the Bitcoin blockchain. OK, but that's interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in, uh, in seeing the, you know, the MVP and getting that uh, kicked off and starting seeing where, um, you know, where the wheels start coming off the wagon, so to speak. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. This is, yep. I mean, you know, it's almost a moral imperative that we have as 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 people that are in the know at this point. Um, this decentralized mechanisms and the decentralized economies that are coming, um, they have to happen. They they need to happen, and um, it, it's guys like you that are doing uh, the the heavy lifting and and uh, uh, and putting this together that uh, really. Uh, uh, my hat's off to you and I really appreciate it. I really do. We, we do have a couple of questions and thank you guys for the questions. Um, and I want to, uh, uh, Kenny Davis, uh, uh, asks a question. Hi, Kenny. Uh, Kenny Davis says, does that mean that charter coin is also less energy intensive than Bitcoin mining? Wow. Uh, yes. <laughs> Kenny went yes, there. Because Kenny went there. <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was a great question. <laughs> Absolutely much more efficient uh, because you know every minute the race starts again and so you're not having this you know perpetual quest upward you know based on how much hashing power is being used in fact the reason that this mathematical model works better than the difficulty algorithm is because you eliminate hash rate instability as a driving factor of uh, of the stability of a coin Right now, you know, we're supremely focused on the, the, the hash rate in determining uh, uh, a coin's stability and determining, uh, uh, obviously, speed, etc. So right now, for example, we know that, you know, five miners in China control 70 percent of, you know, of the hash hashing power. You know, if they were you know, if they were to, to, to stop tomorrow, uh, we would see a huge amount of instability. It would be a long time before the next block is mined. Uh, we would need time for the difficulty algorithm to readjust and for others to increase their, you know, their hashing power. So we would see a huge amount of instability in in Bitcoin or in any coin being mined using the, the, the difficulty algorithm. Um, but we don't have you know, that issue the, in the chart. There's the investment incentive also. I mean, they already have these ant miners. They're already working these ant miners. Uh, these ant miners go for ever and a day. So, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, um, unless they, uh, unless the, the Chinese government uh, outlaws it, which they have a couple of times and it's survived that, um, mm -hmm. it's come back from that. So, you know, there's, you know, yeah. Um, ant mining in the first go around as far as CPU mining and, and the introduction of ASCII chips, um, really is a, um, and Clayton is asking a question here. So, uh, uh, let, let's, uh, let's get to this question as far as Clayton and, uh, DMC Donald, I'll get to you, but, um, uh, so, uh, Clayton Conway asks, will this be ask, ask, ask Asking yeah, resistance. Basic resistance. <laughs> yeah. And is there uh, an advantage for having higher computer power? Um, if it is a race, how do you ensure that some of the racers um, uh, aren't always winning the race because they have the most powerful hardware? Are there checks and balances in place? Very good question for miners like me. Great question. So, yes, ASIC resistant. Um, advantage for having higher computing power, only, only proportional advantage. So, no no permanent advantage. Uh, one of the ways that we uh, ensure equitable distribution is I talked about how the work is distributed to each one individually. 
Uh, they're all working on different work segments. So the complexity that someone is working on uh, might be at this level and the complexity that someone else is working on might be at this level. And based on how they choose to solve this model, because there are multiple ways to get to uh, a, a more complex uh, model, really will be a function of both computational power as well as how the miners decide to attack these problems because they're mathematical models. And so uh, uh, this equitable distribution of work, there are literally for every minute, there's over a quadrillion different work segments that we can distribute. So if everyone on the planet decided to be a miner, we actually have enough work segments to distribute individualized work to each and every miner who decides to to mine charter coin. And so as long as you um, while as long as you have the bandwidth and the computational power to do that, you probably could, right? Correct, correct. So as long as uh, uh, so from a miner's perspective, yes, having more computational power will will help you, but it doesn't ensure that you will win every race. Okay, um, uh, Clayton, I hope that answers that question for you. It answered it for me. It's um, interesting for me because I am a, a miner. Um, and uh, DMC Donald, I wanted to get to your questions. Uh, will Chartered Coin be a public blockchain? I think we've answered that one. It's on GitHub Absolutely. and it will be. Why don't we d dive a little deeper into that a little bit? Go ahead. Yeah. So, so you know, we we are big believers that um, public blockchains are public blockchains are the future. <laughs> um, uh, whether it's side chains that end up posting stuff to public blockchains to because of that immutability, because of that decentralization, because of that trust uh, trustless environment, um, uh, or simply because uh, like Bitcoin, people want and only will trust public blockchain. So we've been focused on innovation uh, on protocol, protocol based innovations to address these challenges that the public blockchains have that, you know, private blockchains don't have. You'll see a gazillion private blockchains out there talking about how fast they are. Well, it's because you only allow, you don't allow anyone to have a node, you know, with, with, with charter coin, anyone can run a super node. Anyone can lend computational power from their wallet in order to verify uh, transactions. And so uh, we absolutely will be a public blockchain. And it's my, it's, uh... It's uh, regulated with difficulty and hash rates and time. Complexity, Com complexity and, and time. So we, we call it just a, a time lock system where okay. time lock and you know, people are racing to find the greatest, uh, most unique digital signature, which we call proof of complexity. So the most complex digital signature and a winner take all race. Proof of complexity. Okay, I'll, I'm going to have to get my arms around that one. I've got a new one to, to start thinking about, right? Uh, proof of capacity and proof of complexity. Okay, great. Wonderful. Yes. It's been added to uh, the... To the I see Vinoff has a question in the in the chat window. Vinoff has uh, a question in the chat window. Why don't you go ahead and get to that? Yeah, he says, can we use the Chartercoin blockchain to track asset movement? Or is it only for money transaction? Great question. So we are building it first and foremost for transfer of value as electronic cash. Uh, will there, can there be other uh, uses for it? Yes, absolutely. People will utilize the APIs and SDKs and do a wide range of things with, with the protocol, uh, we're sure. But our focus is on building the electronic cash that people will be using 50, 100, 1,000 years from now. Okay. Um... What, uh, one question um, from DMC McDonald again. What is the business yes. model of Chartercoin? Let's go a little deeper into that a little bit. What are, what, what's your mission statement? What's your goals? What are you looking to do when you grow up? Great question. So uh, once the protocol is developed, we'll stick that into a, into a not-for-profit uh, or some sort of cooperative of some sort. Uh, we haven't exactly determined, you know, some sort of non-for-profit, it'll sit there. And then we, like others, will continue to build services uh, and tools around the platform as uh, a protocol. Obviously, we'll continue to, to, to work on it as necessary, but we'll build services just like other people are. Did, 
Did, did you say headless? It, yeah, I mean, it it it, it is absolutely will be will be headless. We we we'll, we'll continue. You no, know, there will be you know folks who are able to continue to work on it. It was um, you 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 said you know couched in it's going into a nonprofit and there'll be some things that we're doing. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that 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 headless got out there, right? That's that's interesting. Yes, yes. So I, it, it didn't it, mean it, it, it's a ahead. public protocol. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah. public protocol. So you know, we're not going to uh, uh, you know we we want to build products and services around it as well. So for for example, uh, you know the the three factor you know authentication uh, authentication in order to you know recover your wallet. That's a service that we will build uh, on top of the protocol. You know that, that will you know hey you have a wallet you can turn this on and you know charge you five bucks a month so that you know you never worry about losing your wallet, things like that. And I'm just using that as an example. So services, I imagine, you know, if if uh, if you have velocity in the transaction, there could be things that uh, you could talk about as far as, you know, uh, uh, smart contracts and things of this nature and getting into some of the things that Ethereum is doing down the road. Um, so basically, that's probably a, a second step. Um, and you're just interested at this point in, in improving velocity and improving security. So that's it's, it's interesting, yeah. interesting yeah. stuff. Um, our, so, our, our belief uh, is we've got to stay focused initially in, in particular. You know, you, you, you can't be everything that, to everybody. So we're going to stay focused initially on on driving through with this, you know, this vision of building the electronic cash that people will use for a long time. Yeah, let's answer this question really quick. Will there be any pre mined no. charter coin? course not. No. Uh, um, it, it's time sensitive and that kind of takes pre-mining out of those of the situation and you have well, in your proof of stake algorithm you have uh, you have to understand what the last uh, two blocks were in order to create the, the current block in the current minute so and then so that, that's, that's part right. of it. The other part is we, we don't, you know, we're not doing either any pre-mining. We're not even, since we're not doing an ICO, there'll be no pre-sale uh, uh, either. So, um, you know, like I said, we'll, people will earn stuff the old fashioned way. You'll, 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 you'll mine for it and you'll get incentives for, uh, um, for verifying transactions. And it will be headless eventually. Yes, yes. It, so, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the quick question is, you guys are really working in time and you're working in quantum and things of this nature. And really what I'd like you to figure out is how you could, uh, you know, step into the quantum time signature and get this thing done, like, by next week. Because, you know. <laughs> So would we. So would we. <laughs> <laughs> um, all, all interesting things and very good points. And... Uh, I think, uh, it, you know, it's an exercise in some of the issues that we're having in the current infrastructure. Um, it's an interesting uh, way to go around about consensus and mining and adding that proof of time, basically. So proof of complexity includes um, proof of work, proof of, of, of stake and proof of time, um, which is interesting. Um, I, I, I haven't. I don't think I'm, I'm trying to think of someone that, that has brought that kind of an algorithm in. And I think it's fairly unique. I, 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 I haven't been exposed to one. Maybe there's one out there. I haven't, um, I haven't come across anyone. And when I was doing my due diligence, I was trying very hard. Yeah. Um, I am a reader uh, of yours, Chris. So please continue to be proliferous in your, uh, uh, in your information that you're disseminating. Uh, education Thanks. will uh, help us with adoption, and we really appreciate what you're doing. And please uh, continue to move forward. Um, thank you, everyone, for the questions. Uh, thank you, Kenny, and, and thank you, uh, Mr. Donnell, and thank you, Clayton, and uh, thank you, everyone, for visiting. Uh, once again, this will be available in replay at the YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and search for Blockchain Weekly, and you'll be able to... to um, uh, to, to look at that. And uh, there you go. There, uh, you, you've wasted another perfectly good hour here at Blockchain <laughs> Week. Uh, it's a, it's, really it's a total it. time sink. Yeah, total time sink. It just, it just happens so quickly. It's over before we know it. 
Um, <laughs> and and uh, thank you for demonstrating the uh, what we're calling the the blockchain virus that you are, you were infected with. Um, yes. And there's many of us that have have gone through the same process and and realize that this changes everything. Let's uh, let's all continue to be a community and, and can can you continue to move forward. Uh, Mike, I want to thank you, and I want to thank Shindig once again. Shindig is a incredible uh, environment, uh, and Shindig uh, uh, provides us with this environment. People can sit and chat and talk. Um, uh, let me tell you, there's going to be uh, little bigger audiences coming down the pike. Um, we have a special guest coming in next week, and I'm uh, I, I don't I don't want to mention it to, to jinx it. It's so cool. Um, and then uh, we've got uh, four or five more um, uh, guests coming on in the next four or five weeks. It's going to be an incredible run in the next month or so uh, with Blockchain Weekly. So this is not something you want to miss. It's every Wednesday at, um, uh, at 12 o'clock Mountain Standard Time in Arizona. And I think it's 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 1 o'clock Central. You want to be here. You want to be on there and, and following what's happening with Blockchain Weekly. Um, uh, once again, Shindig, if you guys have interesting ideas, if you're doing ICOs, if you want to do training, if you want to do education, education will help us spur uh, adoption, guys. Please, please, please reach out to Mike Michaelakis, and his number is 646-896-1747. Uh, Mike at Shindig Events and say, hey, Mike, um, uh, Mike Noel asked me to give you a call. I saw the Shindig at Blockchain Weekly, and I'm interested in doing one of these myself. And please, please, please do this because uh, uh, the, the, the more we can get going on this and the more education that we can that we can get, uh, the sooner we're going to have adoption, the sooner we're going to have things like Chartercoin out there uh, and, and moving forward. Chris, I really appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. Mike, once again, I appreciate you. And, and thanks, everyone, for uh, joining us on a Blockchain Weekly. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye now.